On today's episode, the military's weaponized Starship is under development, a second launch tower for Starbase is coming, and Relativity Space lights up their new 3D printed rocket engine. This is the Space Race. The SpaceX Starship has been the most exciting story to follow in 2023. We know that spaceflight nerds like us have been loving the spectacle of this giant rocket, but there is another group who have been eyeing up the Starship with great interest, the United States military. Something tells me that these guys aren't interested in flying to Mars or extending the light of consciousness or any of that Elon Musk space messiah stuff. They see a giant rocket powered war machine. We know that the Air Force wants their own personal variant of the Starship. They've made that intention known for years now, in fact, and according to news reports, the Air Force has been greatly impressed by the progress at Starbase this year. Back in January of 2022, SpaceX was awarded a $102 million contract by the Air Force Research Laboratory to demonstrate suborbital cargo transportation with their in-development Starship vehicle. Concept renderings of this military starship started to emerge around 2020, the idea being that making hops into space and landing across the world is a much quicker way to deliver supplies in the case of not just military maneuvers, but also emergency aid missions, something the US military does a lot of. Planes are slower and cause more pollution than a rocket launch, and so they have been looking into options for using suborbital jumps instead, but it hasn't been easy. Aside from just the normal setbacks from testing, like the April 20th explosion that ended the first Starship test flight, there's just a lot of data that needs to be checked before a plan like this can be put into action. A suborbital flight might be able to get gear from Florida to Japan in an hour or so, but the Starship has to survive the flight, land safely in potentially dangerous environments, and most importantly, the cargo has to survive a trip through the vacuum of space. It turns out, that a lot of objects require ambient pressure to hold together. Depressurization frequently damages electronics, plumbing, and basically anything that can't handle the sudden loss of external forces. SpaceX is probably going through quite a bit of this sort of testing with their Dragon capsule right now, as the Polaris Dawn missions will require depressurizing the entire vehicle so their astronauts can go for a spacewalk. NASA had to plan similarly during the Gemini missions that accomplished a similar feat, and the onboard terminals and flight equipment had to be built to withstand a vacuum. Then there's the turbulence involved in launch and re-entry, the sort of forces that require training to endure. Military hardware is robust, but if you're planning on flying rations, water, and electronics, there will need to be some considerations for the bumpy ride. And the Air Force has some thoughts on some tests that could work, one of which is reportedly to just fly a Humvee into space, but in order for them to take the next step with this program, they need to see what SpaceX can do. In a November 1st interview with Defense News' Greg Spaniers, the chief scientist at the Air Force Research Laboratory laid out the rocket cargo program's plans for the next two years. First and foremost, 2024 is the big test. The Air Force needs flight data to make a decision on which rocket to select for their cargo program, and so they plan on sitting back and watching as SpaceX makes as many test flights as possible. By the end of 2024, Spaniers says that the Air Force will make its decision on Starship, and if they choose to proceed, then physical testing can begin. He went on to say that the program hopes to have a demonstration flight by 2025 at the earliest, but more realistically, 2026 will be the target. Should this work out, the Air Force will get a suborbital cargo variant that can quickly redeploy gear, supplies, and vehicles anywhere in the world, both to and from orbit. The sky is truly the limit here. It's getting close to the holidays, but the construction teams at Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas are hard at work getting the site ready for the next launch of Starship, but that's not all they're doing. On December 12th, crews were spotted beginning some heavy-duty work, not on the orbital launch mount or the tank farm, but on suborbital pad A in the newly renamed Gateway to Mars area. It looks like SpaceX has other plans for that spot because over the course of the next several hours, construction crews used cranes, heavy machinery, and hand tools to completely disassemble the suborbital test stand. This pad is one of two structures that SpaceX has used to conduct cryoproofing, spin prime, and static fire tests in the past, but pad A was last used back in February with a cryoproofing test for Ship 26, and I guess now we know why that is. 
There are a couple of reasons we can think of as to why SpaceX would want to remove Pad A from that location, and it's definitely not because they're slowing down. Repairs to the main launch pad and tower are going very quickly thanks to the minimal damage sustained during the second test flight of Starship last month. The quick disconnects were both repaired at the same time Pad A was being demolished, for instance. But it's clear that the space around the old test stand is being prepped for greater things. The shiny new gateway to Mars entrance and signage is one clear indication of things to come, but another clue has been quietly given to us from all the way over on the space coast. SpaceX has a huge worksite at Pad 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. Here is where the company has been constructing what will one day be the primary launch facility for Starship, complete with a production and maintenance facility just down the road. But at the end of last week, Camera crews for NASA spaceflight caught a giant fuel tank and an even bigger section of launch tower being loaded onto a barge, and we assume it's headed towards Texas. SpaceX seems to be cannibalizing tower parts from their current Florida construction in order to make a second tower at Starbase. Now, nothing has been confirmed by the company yet, but it makes a lot of sense. First off, Florida already has a tower nearing completion, and while that site will need a second tower at some point, testing needs to speed up at Boca Chica before the company even gets to launch from Florida, so a second tower doesn't make much sense there. And that need for a quicker pace of testing is another good reason to think that this tower section is headed to Texas. We've spoken before about the extremely tight schedule for testing milestones that SpaceX has to hit this coming year, and there's just no way they could possibly complete all the test flights they need with just one tower operational. Now, the demolition of suborbital pad A is a good indication of where this second tower will need to go. Normally, putting two launch apparatus so close together would be a bad idea, but that new deluge system really carried its weight during the last test flight, proving that it can easily contain the forces thrown out by Starship's super heavy booster. But pad A's demolition is not the only indication of that either. On December 12th, at an invite-only function in Brownsville, Texas, Starbase General Manager Kathy Luter said that the company would be relocating all engine testing to the Massey site just down the road from Starbase proper. Up until now, Massey's has been used for tank pressurization tests and some cryoproofing, but Luter's comments would seem to indicate that the remaining suborbital launch pad at Starbase would be moving to the secondary site at some point, freeing up even more space for a second tower. All of this adds up to a safe bet for a new tower being built at Starbase in the next couple of months. For that though, SpaceX is going to need to expand their orbital launch area a little bit to give the public roadway some more space from the new tower. That's going to mean some extensive work drilling new piles into the soft Boca Chica coastline for support. It's going to mean installing a second tank farm, water storage facility, and OLM with its own deluge system. This won't be a small task by any stretch. The company would have a good opportunity here to build a more robust fuel and water storage system that would be capable of feeding both towers, but that would require halting operations at the site, so it's not likely to happen unless they have a big shutdown window for another reason. Regardless, it looks like SpaceX has their work cut out for them, but a second tower being built means that we could see a double launch event at some point, or potentially see the first attempt at catching a returning booster. Two towers is redundancy, and redundancy means SpaceX can perform some of the riskier tests. Relativity Space, the company that 3D prints their rockets and rocket engines, has announced another milestone, as on December 14th, the company completed a hot fire of their Eon-R engine at their NASA test site in Mississippi. The company has a vertical test stand at the John C. Stennis Space Center there, and made a full 10-second duration burn at 70% power, and just like all of their other hardware, this engine was 3D printed. Relativity blasted into space race history when they launched their first rocket, the Terran 1, on March 22nd, 2023. This was the first time that a vehicle made with additive manufacturing technology had ever been flown, and while the vehicle made it all the way to space, its second stage failed to light, and the Terran 1 failed to make it to orbit. From there, Relativity made a wild move. They decided to abandon the Terran 1 and focus on their heavy lift rocket concept, the Terran R. This is where their new engine comes in. The Terran R is a huge rocket, not as big as Starship, but at 270 feet tall, it's still gigantic. 
Just like its predecessor, the Terran R, it's almost completely 3D printed and so are its engines, 13 of which will be powering the first stage of this rocket. The Eon 1 engines that launched Terran 1 put out about 23,000 pounds of force each. The Eon R that just fired last Thursday puts out over 10 times that amount at 258,000 pounds of force. That's about half of the output of a SpaceX-made Raptor 2 engine. The really incredible part of this test is that it likely wouldn't have been possible so soon if Relativity hadn't taken the gamble on leaving Terran 1 behind, but it was absolutely the right call. Without the draw to work on the Terran 1 program, Relativity has been able to sink all of their resources into the Terran R instead, leading to this huge jump in technology not even a year out from their previous tests. That is huge progress even if you don't count the new 3D printing technology they are working with. Watching Relativity's progress has been wild. The applications of their new tech are endless, and they've even been helping NASA with a new type of 3D printed aluminum rocket nozzle. This company is doing some truly cutting edge work, and we can't wait to see what's next.